Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jamel Gibbs, your family-oriented entrepreneur. And what we do on this channel is we teach real estate investors how to create time and freedom through proven real estate investing strategies. So I wanted to welcome you to episode number three of Starting From Scratch. So in this episode, what my nephew and I are gonna do is skip trace some of the leads that he found while he was driving for dollars. And we're gonna start contacting those leads and see where it actually takes us. So let's jump into this. All right, so what we're going to do this week is we're going to focus on skip tracing leads and contacting sellers. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways to skip trace the leads. All right, I'm going to show you a free way, and then I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way, which is using my software. Now, once you figure out, uh, once you figure out how to skip trace, we're going to end up calling the sellers. But what I really want you to do is focus on finding more leads. Right now, you're driving for dollars. You could use the software like I showed you in a in another video. You could use the software to pull the leads as well. But when you're limited on a budget, you got to focus on what you got, right? So we're going to focus directly on driving for dollars. And you're going to use the software because you're paying for the software. You might as well use it to pull leads. But you're going to, I'm going to show you how to use the software again to skip trace those leads in order to be able to contact more sellers. But I want you to get comfortable on the phone before you start calling all of these sellers. Okay. So what we're going to do today is focus on skip tracing it, the maybe three or four leads. I'm going to call three or four people up. We'll see if we could get somebody on the phone. If we could, great. If not, then it is what it is. Um, but whatever happens on our next call, you and I, I want, I want us to role play so that you can get comfortable with how the script goes. So then the following episode, I want you to start calling up these sellers, right? And I want you to get some people on the phone. Even if we got to sit there for a little while, we can speed up the video. That ain't no problem. But I want you to get somebody on the phone and start breaking the ice, right? Start talking to people. One thing I want you to rem remember when you're talking to people, the only thing they can tell you is no. Remember I told you last time, you're looking for the no, right? In fact, there's a book that I want you to grab. It's on Amazon. I'm going I'm to send you a link to it. And I'm also linking in the description of this video if you just want to wait for this to come out. But um, it's called Go For No, right? And, uh, and, and it's, exa it's exactly what we were talking about before, right? You can get the book for like $10 or something like that. Again, I'll link it in the description of the video. And I'll send you a link to it as well. Okay. But... um is go for no. The psychology behind it is to get as many no's as possible because those no's are going to lead to yeses. So normally when you jump on the phone, you're looking for yeses automatically. But when you flip the script and you look for no's, then you're more motivated when you do get the yes. And you got to start all over because you're literally going for the no, right? So again, like I told you before, if I said, yo, I want you to get 20 no's within that 20 no's you might get a yes then you got to start all over right you you don't stop your work day until you get the 20 no's you understand what i'm saying yes sir so that's basically how that works but i'm gonna show you how to skip trace right now i want you to go back and watch this video so you can understand how it works then we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh i'm gonna show you how to skip trace the easy way then we're gonna make some phone calls and then, like I said, on the next call, what we're going to do is actually get some people on the phone if we can't today. Hopefully we can today. But I want to get some people on the line. But I, uh, actually, the next call, I want, I want you and I to role play. And then a the following call, I'll probably come up to Pennsylvania. I'm not sure just yet. But maybe we'll, if, if we together, then we'll, we'll go ahead and make some calls. But I want you to make the calls. Or we'll drive around looking for more houses and stuff like that. But again, two different ways that I told you, I want you driving for dollars. You got to find a minimum of 20 to 25 houses a week. Nothing less, right? Anything less than that is unacceptable. All right? 20, to, you know exactly what you're looking for. I want you to find it. I don't care where you find it at, find it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I want you to use the system and pull the leads. But with the system, that's going to be more of a cold call, meaning these people don't know you. So when you pick up the phone and call them, 
is going to be a cold call, a warm call is somebody that knows you, right? And you pick up the phone and call and you, you had a relationship. A hot call would be somebody that you, you've you already been in a communication with, right? So that's the difference between a cold call, a warm call, and a hot call, okay. right? So if they know you, so let's just say you called them one time and they that you had some type of communication with them, they become a warm lead. If you had multiple conversations with them and it, it feels like it's prog- progressing, it's going somewhere, meaning you, you're probably going to get a contract, that's a hot lead, right? Okay. But a cold call is somebody you don't know and you're just picking up the phone and calling them. That's, co- that's completely cold, all right? When I was your age, I was on Wall Street and I learned how to cold call people worth a hundred million dollars. So when I came into real estate, it was nothing for me to pick up the phone and call them. And it all boils down to having a script. I don't care how experienced you are. I've been in this for 20 years, gonna be 21 years, right? I still use a script. It's in my head, but I use a script, mm-hmm. right? All professional salespeople that make a lot of money use scripts. I don't care who you are. You can ask anybody. They all use scripts, right? And all a script is is a que- is a questionnaire. You just want to make it more of a conversation, user personality. I want you to remember that people buy you; they don't buy what you're selling, right? So you gotta be yourself, 100% authentically yourself, right? If you could be 100% yourself, it might take you some time to figure it out because you gotta separate um, the professional side. Versus the, the personality side, right? It might take you a little bit of time to figure it out, but that's why I'm, st- I'm, I'm putting this in your head while, while you're just getting started, young, right? Um, you want to be professional. You want to come across the right way, but at the same time, you need to be yourself because people buy you. They buy your personality. I'll give you an example. Many times I've gotten deals where people offered more money than what I offered but the people gave me the deal because they like me more, right? So always be yourself and don't ever let nobody feel like you shouldn't be yourself, all right? Yes, sir. So so what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you my screen. Let me just pull it up. Right now, we're looking at the software. I'm going to open up netronline.com, right? So I'm going to go to public records online right here. You see that? And you sent the addresses over to me. I got them in my text message. So I'm going to pull those addresses up real quick. And uh, what does this website do? I'm going to show you exactly what it does. It's a public records website, free information. So the same information we're going to get on the software in in Mm -hmm. seconds, you got to do a little bit of work to get this information. So based on your budget, you know, you could kind of, you know, make a judgment call. Do you want to spend 10 cent to get the lead or do you want to, you know, put a little bit of time in? So it's just based on your current circumstances. So again, this is a public records website. It's called netronline.com, right? Go to public records online right here. Once you go to public records, scroll down. And you're in Pennsylvania, so it's going to select Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, once we go to Pennsylvania, what, what what's uh, Harrisburg's county? I can't even remember. Berks. Berks is uh, Redding. I mean, so. So let me find out what Harrisburg, what county, what county is Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in? Right, and it's telling me Dolphin. it's in yeah, that makes sense. Cumberland County, Harrisburg is Dolphin County, right? Yeah, so Dolphin. you got Dolphin County, right here. So we're gonna go back to Net R online. See how quick I found that. Google yes, every Google everything if you don't know the answer, no. right? So we're gonna scroll down to view more, and we're gonna find Dolphin County, right? Mm-hmm. So now what we're looking for is the Dolphin County Assessor. Right here, you see that? Okay. Then we're gonna go to data online right here. 
And once we go to data online, it says select a search. This is my first time on this. So we're going to just, you know, I'm totally green to this site. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, we're going to find out, right? It says step one, select a search method. So I would like to search by search for a specific property by parcel number. I think the easier way to do it is to search for more one or more properties by name, address, and criteria, right? So we're going to search by, uh, we don't have the seller's name, so we're going to go address right here, right? And then it says uh, the house address. So I'm going to put in the address right here, and we're going to go to the street. Let me just take out street because it just says street name because some of these sites are a little tricky. And all we're going to do is click on search right here. And it's loading. So once it loads, we'll see what it comes up with. All right. So we got a seller. Her name is Miranda. So what I'm going to do is click on this. And we're going to retrieve that information. Once it loads, there we go. So we can see that this is a seller who is absentee, which is perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for, right? We got a picture of the property right here, right? This is the property. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Does the property look similar in the pictures that you have? Uh, It's more like the trees is more grown up in front of it and stuff. Okay, so the trees, so it's not pruned. The property looks like it needs more work than this. A little bit, yeah. A little more work. Does it look yes. vacant? Does it look like somebody's living there? How does it look? No, it looks vacant. It looks vacant. vacant. Perfect. 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 All right. So another good thing is this seller lives in Pittsburgh, which is at least six hours away from this property. Right. So that's a that's a, a plus right there. Right. So you got Harrisburg to let's look up the distance. Right. What's the different the distance? distance again you want to know the answer google it right this is how you research this is how i did everything i didn't know exactly i didn't know what i was doing when i first started i used the resources i had because i didn't have somebody like me to ask right so you use your resources you know how to use google you know how to use social media you can flip real estate man all right distance yes, between harrisburg and pittsburgh Right. So what's the distance between Harrisburg and Pittsburgh? Three, three and a half hours. So that's still a little bit of a, a distance, three and a half to four hours. Right. So that's still a little ways, which is good. She's an absentee owner. And now that we have her name, all I'm going to do is copy her name right here. Right. And then what I'm going to do is go to I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm going to go to, uh, let's say, fastpeoplesearch.com. I'm not a fan of this site, but um, when you when it's free information, you got to do what you got to do. So we're going to go through this and find these these boats. Right. I'm going to select them. Click on click on next. It's asking me for these boats again. All right. So perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and put her name in. I'll take her last name, put her first name first, and then I'm just going to go back to the information, and I'm going to copy the zip code where she lives. Let's just say Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, PA. Did I spell that right? Pittsburgh, PA. And then, uh, actually, Pittsburgh might be spelled a little different. Hold on a second. I think it has a... They no, got, yeah, got, got a G. G. Yeah, there it is. Pittsburgh. So you don't even have to be a genius to do this, man. Pittsburgh, PA. And let's type in her zip, right? Let's go free search. And there you have it. You got her information. She's 42 years old. Let me just double check her address is all the same. Her address and everything matches. 
And these are the phone numbers that we have, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is, first and foremost, I want to copy these phone numbers. And then we're going to pick up the phone and actually call her, right? So let me just copy okay. these numbers. All right? I'm going to paste them in a different doc. And then we're going to pick up the phone and call her, right? So... Let's call her and see what's going on with this. So again, tell me a little bit about the property before I call her so that I know what I'm talking about when I get on the phone because I haven't seen the property myself. Uh, it has a little bit of trees in front. Uh, hold on. I think I might. You might have a picture of it. No, but I was trying to see if maybe if I search up a picture, you think they'll have a recent one? Oh, uh, you don't even have to do that because it's going to be the same information that we have right here. All right. Okay. So we got and, the and first. I really seen like the trees in front of it. Uh, the grass wasn't really that cut. Uh, you could tell like some of the, the house structure was a little damaged. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Another thing you could do, right? Before I even pick up the phone and call her, let's verify this information, right? So we could go here into the software, right? Let me just type, let me just copy this address real quick. Go right here in the software. You see where it says uh, you got the property search right here? Yes, sir. Just type it in. It's going to pop up. Now let's verify this information right within the software, right? And you got all the information. It, 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 it all lines up. This is a three-bedroom, one-bath property. Property taxes are right around $3,000 a year. Um, Two-story house. So let me just see here. Let me look. This is where we're going to be able to find that information. Transaction history. Okay, perfect. So she bought it back in 2008. So she probably got a fair amount of equity in this property. This might actually be a good a, a good one to do a hybrid wholesaling with. Yeah, notice of foreclosure. She got she actually got a notice of foreclosure, pre-foreclosure. Look at this. See that? So oh, pre foreclosure yeah. right now. As of August. So this is definitely something that we're gonna find out. So we got a pre-foreclosure. The auction sale date is on the 16th, which is in two weeks from now. So we gotta we gotta get to her quick. All right. Okay. Um, we, we have her phone number. Um, we don't need to skip trace it in the system because we got everything we need. Let's call her up and let's see what we can do. All right. Okay. So let me just see. This is a this is actually a good lead, man. Um, so let me just call her real fast. I'm not gonna leave a message on that one because she has two numbers. So let's just see. I think this one might be a cell phone number that we're calling. Okay. So if there is two phones, would you call the other one and then if they don't answer call back the other one to leave a message i'll probably so that number is no good so yeah i'm definitely going to call that first number back mm -hmm. to leave a message um but in this case i definitely want to find her so i'm probably going to end up skip tracing it okay hi is um miranda available yeah the wrong number i'm sorry thanks all right, so that's the wrong number. So we got to find her, right? So if we can't find her, we have to send her a letter immediately, right? Because the auction date is like next week. So I want you to literally write a letter saying that you're, I'm going to give you a letter that you can use. Okay. And just tell her, look, you see that it's in pre foreclosure. We want to buy this property as soon as possible. Okay? okay. Um, And then we can work it out. We can save it from the auction. Okay, so let me add this to the uh, let me add this property to the skip trace add to my leads. Okay, let me look at the comps real quick as well before I add to the lead. So 183. Yeah, we can make something work with this house, man. But uh, okay, so yeah, 137 is right around. Yeah, so she's getting 183 over there, 130, between 140 and 180, 
right? This is a good property, man. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is adding this to the leads. Let me just go back for a second and add it here. All right, we got one added. You can see how I did it. I just clicked on add to my leads. And I'm gonna I'm gonna skip trace that in a bit. All right. So we can find our right number. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. All right. And just do a little more research. I'm just excited about this one because I mean she's going into foreclosure. But we could is that, we could, we could, is that we could, something easier to get a house out of? We could save that, man. We can make it, we can make it happen. That's a level, that's a high level of motivation right there. All right. Yes, sir. If you see somebody going into foreclosure, that's a good one. All right. So now let's move on to the next one. So back to Dolphin County. All right. Let's go back out. Let's type in the next address. The next address is right there on Jefferson Street. So let's go ahead and search for that. Um, again, same same routine that we that we already did, right? Mm-hmm. Same routine, nothing special. So that was the wrong number for her, and that's fine. Okay, so this one is possibly, let's just see, it, it may be owned by a lender. And that looks about right. So, yeah, they're in California. A ba- this is bank owned. This is a bank owned property. Okay. We could try to reach out to them, but to be honest, it's going to be difficult to get this one. Um, because most banks are going to list their properties with realtors. But what we could do is Google this this uh, particular company. Lender? Yeah, we could Google them. You can see there's their website right here. And then what uh-huh. we could do is reach out to them to see if there's a way that we can, because this is a smaller bank, right? So let me just uh, see if there's a phone number for us to call up. But chances are they're gonna they're they're definitely a hundred percent of the time they're gonna list it with a realtor. Back in the day when I first started, they would I would have been able to communicate with somebody to be able to uh get these leads. But we could still try. You never know. Okay. All right. So they got a phone, customer service, loan mm-hmm. servicing, loss mitigation. That's probably the department we we want to talk to. Let me just see anything else. Real estate owned right there. Real estate owned. And then they got a they got a uh, an email address. So what we could do right here is take down this uh this address. I'm gonna leave this page up so that we can send them an email expressing our interest in in uh the property, right? So uh for example, let me just pull up my email real quick property in Pittsburgh. Notice. Oh, it's a property in Harrisburg. Oh, Harrisburg. Thanks, man. Harrisburg. I've noticed you have a property on Jefferson Street. We noticed you have a property on Jefferson Street in Harrisburg, PA. We are interested in purchasing this property and would like to know who to speak to in order to make an offer. And is this what you would say to any uh, bank owned property? Yeah. I mean, we, I'm just, I'm just something similar to this is fine. If you can contact 
us in regards to the property or who to speak to agent or rep we would appreciate it thanks just gonna click on send so we just contacted two of those properties right mm -hmm. i want to just look up the other two let's just focus on that real quick and hopefully we get somebody on the line, but I definitely want to circle back around and skip trace that other one. The first one? The first one. Because that's a private seller. And that's a hot lead right there. All right? Yes, so sir. we got that one down. Sent them an email already. But you, you get the gist of how this works, man. All we're doing is research. It's yes, almost sir. like when we're skip tracing, we're private investigators looking to get somebody on the phone that we could talk to mm -hmm. about that property. We found the property. Now we want to get somebody on the phone so that we could discuss the property, the details and stuff like that. So then we could go ahead and make an offer. The more people we talk to, we speak to 25 people, we'll get a deal. We'll get at least one contract. The average is the average for, for a brand new person who's just getting started. It's about 20 to 30 people you talk, you talk to, you'll get a contract, right? As you get better at it and you're able to like, for, for me, it's like one in seven. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I speak to seven people. I'm going to get at least one contract. Okay. So the better you get at it, the more fluent you become over the phone, the more... You, that's why you got to read books on persuasion, stuff like that, okay. so that you can understand how to talk to people. It all boils down to being yourself, man. <clears throat> if you could just be yourself, you're going to go very far. All right? So um, let me share my screen again. And let's type in the next address. Let me look for it. Hold on. So the next one is. Hold on. You texted it to me. Eddington. So on 61st Street. So let's type in that one. All right. So. Sixty one. And let's just. Click on search. Now, again, you notice I didn't put a street in there. I didn't put a place in there. No matching parcels found. So let's let's try it a different way. Uh, south. Oh, south. That's what it is. South 61. So let's see what that's looking like. No matching parcels. So 61st. No matching parcel. Um, let's see, south, let's spell it out. We got to try it different ways. No matching parcel. Uh, south 61. So sometimes you got to really play around with the site in order to see. So now the next thing, none of that works. So I'm going to Google and I'm going to type in south 61st. Street in Harrisburg, right? Uh -huh. I'm seeing how they got it listed right here. And okay. copy it. Copy it and take it back over. And the next thing I could do is go to Zillow. Matter of fact, why don't we just make it easy? Go to Zillow. Do different websites they vary on the um the value? Or yeah, you know it, it does because they these are all simulated. Which basically means that they're taking uh, a bunch of information and they're, they're simulating it in order to create a value on the property. That, that stuff is, that's not the right way to approach it, but it's a good way to pull other information on sites like this. So if I come here, you see where it says see complete tax history. I can click mm -hmm. on that right there, get some more information. But then you see where it says find assessor info. I can go to the county website right there and it'll take me right to it. But now it says that this... This page is not found. So it's going to be really hard to find. So we got to skip trace this one, right? So what I'm going to do is go back to the software. I'm going to go to the main page. 
and I'm going to just paste in the information right here. So you can see it popped up. Let's click on search. Right. And you can see now I got a little bit of information, right? Oh, yeah. I got the I got the owner's name and I got some information on it. Right. So if I scroll down, you can see there was a notice of foreclosure back in back in uh, September, September. Right. So we're going to mm -hmm. we're definitely going to add her to the list. It says there was an auction, too. There's an auction coming up. Yep. So we're going to add that one to the list as well. And then we got one more to find, man. Let's, let's find this last one and, and, and let's just focus on seeing if we can get somebody on the phone. And that's on Eddington Avenue. Yes, sir. Eddington, right? So let's just type in Eddington. Av. I'm not going to type in Av. I'm just going to type in Eddington. Three. Let's click on search. And then we got the, the seller or the property owner's information right here. Good thing Georgia. is this property owner lives in Atlanta, right? So this is, and when you saw this property, looking at this house right here, was it clean like this? Yeah. It looked it was, nice. It looked nice? Yes, it just looked vacant. Okay. The good thing is the seller lives in Atlanta. So that's the, the one thing that we got going on with that one. All right. So let's find out a little more information. Let's take this information and go back to the software. And let's see if we could uh, get a little more information. Maybe they're in a situation. As Hold well. I think that might have been the house that I had a little bit of run down on the side. Okay, perfect. I need those pictures that you took. Yeah, yeah. I'll get those as soon as possible. Yeah, we need those so I can be able to tell what's really going on. Okay. Right? So scroll down a little bit. You can see they got a loan on it for 224000 Okay. All right. Notice of foreclosure. Yep. Another foreclosure right here. <clears throat> And the auction is going to be January 20th. Yep. So these are three good properties, three good deals. This guy lives in Atlanta. This property is going on the foreclosure. We can save that, right? Okay. Um, I want to add this one, and I want to add the other two as well. And I'm going to skip trace this one as well. And click on next, and then we're going to do that. Charge my card. You're going to owe me 30 cent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take it out of the first paycheck. <laughs> okay, I'll give you my two quarters. <laughs> All right, so uh, that was one that I just skipped. We got two more because the other one I don't think I skipped. Uh, yeah, I think. Eddington. Yeah. All right. Eddington, let's see. Let's add this to the list. Let's just skip it. So then that one is done. And then let's do the, the last one, which is on 61st Street. We found the seller, but um, the other systems didn't have the information. So let's just see if we could see if we could find that. All right. Got that right there. Let's add it to the list. And let's skip this one as well. So now what happens is once they skip, which it only takes a few seconds to do it, they're now going to be in the system, right? So when you go over here to your property leads, 
you'll have them on the properties. I'm sorry, you'll have uh, the information that you need, right? So there's, okay. as you can see, I got a duplicate there because I actually pulled these already. Um, I got a bunch of them in there, but uh, here's the the one on Eddington. So I just basically paid for that two times, but it's all good. Um, so Eddington. Yeah, how do we get the same ones? Because I pull, I skipped these leads on our first call, if you remember. Oh, okay. All right, but it's okay. Um, so the money is coming right back to me anyway. I own the software, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll reach out to these people again. Um, I want to show you how to do it again. We, you, you can see we. We went through netronline.com. Mm -hmm. We got all of the information online. We ver we were able to verify it through a skip trace through the software, right? Mm -hmm. um, we we went to site a site like you know yeah. fastfoodresearch.com to get to get some phone numbers, but unfortunately we couldn't get the phone numbers through there, mm -hmm. right? So we had to skip trace in order to get. Uh, a working phone number. Unfortunately, that person doesn't have a working phone number. You can see there's no mobile data. So that means that we got to reach out to her as soon as possible. Okay. Right. And then we're doing um, that by the mail. And we're going to be doing that by mail. Right. So if it wasn't online or skip trace or anything like that, chances are she, they don't have a phone number listed for her. So we just got to we got to roll with the punches and, and we got her mailing address. So we'll send her, um, we'll send her an agreement um, okay. to purchase as soon as possible. All right. Um, that's one way that I approach it rather than sending, you know, a postcard or something like that. I'll send mm -hmm. a, an agreement with a cover letter saying, look, I want to be able to purchase your property. Here's a contract. Call me to discuss the contract. Okay. Right? And that'll get people calling. And do you right. do you show like a do you show the contract then? Yeah, I, I send them a send them a copy of it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll talk I'll talk to you more about that as well. Um, let's go back to the leads real quick. Uh, so that was sixty uh, first Street, I believe. I'm just trying to. Okay, Mary Burrows. Now, she was another one that was hard to get some data, but we got a phone number right here that we couldn't find anywhere else. So that's her work number. That's what it says. So we'll try and give her a call. And let me just verify the one on Eddington as well. All right. Uh, so Boaz, we couldn't get in contact with Eddington. Let's see what's going on. Eddington. We got a work number for him as well. But chances are, again, he's he's in Atlanta. It's probably not going to be the correct information. I might have to go back into, let's say, fast people search. Let me just type this dude up in Atlanta and see what we come up with. Atlanta, Georgia, right? And his name was Dale. I think that was his name. Let me just double check it. Let me close out all these other tabs real fast. Yeah, Dale Dennis. Yeah, we got it. All right, so let me just uh, verify that. Okay. Yeah, so this is the guy right here. So there's a bunch of phone numbers that we could call him on. So I got that phone number, 717 number. Yeah, that's the one that we got listed as well. Let's try to reach out to him and see see what we could get worked out. Hold on a second. Verizon Wireless, your call All right, that number is no good. So let's try to let's try another number four oh four. Chances are he's in Atlanta. Let's try that four oh four number right there.
All right, we, we got it ringing. Hi, can I speak to Dale, please? Hey, Dale, this is uh, Jamel. I'm up here in uh, Pennsylvania. How are, how are you today? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. I noticed uh, you had a property here in uh, Harrisburg, and I just wanted to see if you were interested in... What's up? I'm sorry? Oh, wrong Dale Dennis. Oh, man. I appreciate your help, brother. Thanks, man. Bye. Wow. So, wrong guy. Dale Dennis is a, a common name. So, I mean, that's fine. So, I'm guessing that that guy is MIA right now. But we could, we could try to call out that line right there. Should we try to send a letter a letter to the apartment also? Um, I don't know because this guy, I mean, he's Dale Dennis in Atlanta. Now I've had situations where you got somebody named Jamel Gibbs live in, let's say, New Jersey. There's a bunch of Jamel Gibbses out there, right? Mm -hmm. You can just Google it, right? Um, I had a guy in Charlotte named Jamel Gibbs, and I, I'm about an hour away from Charlotte. They used my name in order to open up uh what was it a tom warner like a cable it was like a cable uh account for him you know what i mean so i had to get that removed off of my situation because uh, you know what i mean so sometimes they yeah. interchange names i don't know why or how that actually works but um you know sometimes it's hard to find the right people but let me just call on this line and see no answer on that one Let's try the next one. I'm going to keep trying them until we get them. Until okay. we exhaust the numbers, at least. All right, no answer on that one. I'm going to keep trying these numbers. All right, man. So this is the last number. What if no number answers? We, no we're number. gonna we're gonna we're gonna send him send a letter. Now, sometimes when you send a letter to, let's say we were to send a letter to the actual property, right? If we send a letter to that actual property, if he's getting his his mail forwarded to a different address, they'll it'll go there. It'll, it'll go there, right? So okay. that's that's something that we could try, right there. So that's two that we couldn't get in contact with today. Um, but let me go ahead and try this third one. So we contacted Eddington. We contacted Boaz. Let's try this other lady. The 61st? Yeah, let's try her and see what we're able to come up with. So she got one number that I was able to find. Let's see if we are able to contact her. All right, I'm calling. All right, so that's that's uh that's disconnected as well. So what we want to do uh is she has a different mailing address, so we're going to go ahead and send her a letter as well. Okay. So let's send all three letters out and let's make this happen. Uh, today all okay. right and hopefully we'll hear back from some of these people but we're going to send a letter with some type of urgency uh maybe even a contract within the the mailer so that we could uh we could show that we're serious about it and then um yeah man i need you to go out and find a whole lot more of these okay these are three really solid leads if you focus on the leads that you found like this in in a in a mass number you know, 20 to 25 of these a week, you, you're going to get a deal in no time. But you, you, sure. you're targeting the right people. We just got to be able to do it in numbers because okay. obviously, you know, we got situations where we can't even contact certain people. So focus on that. 
this week. I want you to get 20 more houses, man. 25 okay. more houses. Make it happen. You know what to look for. Now you just got to get out there and do the work. You yes, saw sir. exactly how to, and I want you to skip trace. I want you to practice skip tracing them now too. So I just showed you exactly what to do. So I'm not going to sit here and do the work for you, but I want you to skip trace, but don't pick up the phone and call them yet. All right. Cause we need to do some role playing before you actually do that. All right. So yes, find these leads and skip trace them and create a spreadsheet or use your software. You got the software, use the software, house it all in the software, spend a little 10 cent per lead or whatever, or do it yourself and upload the leads into the software. And um, let's make this happen. 25 okay, yes, more leads within the next seven days. All right. Yes, sir. All right, man. I'll talk to you on the next one. Uh, you be safe. All right, man. Peace. Love you. Later. Love you too. Send a girl that's I will. All right. So there you guys have it. Episode number three of starting from scratch. Now, listen, obviously there was a lot that we covered. This was a little longer episode than the other episodes that we came out with, but you learn exactly how we go about finding the seller's information so that we can get in contact with them. Now, granted, we weren't able to get in contact with anybody today because we only called three or four people, but at least you have a general idea of how to skip trace leads and how to start contacting sellers. Now, in the next episode, like I told my nephew, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of role playing, but I want him to start finding more leads. The name of the game here is leads. The more leads you have, the more chances you have of actually getting a deal. All right. So, and obviously the more deals you get, the more money you make. So I told him, go out there, start finding 20 to 25 of these things a week. He got to start hustling. If not, you know, he's going to, it's going to take a long time for him to actually materialize some money out of this business. Right. So the name of the game is leads. And the same thing for you guys. I want you all to go out there and start finding 20 to 25 leads a week right now and follow the same procedures that we went through in this particular video. So listen, join us on the next one where we're actually going to do some role playing and, you know, maybe in a couple of episodes when he has his stuff together, we'll start making some live calls with him again and uh, hopefully lock up some, some deals. All right, so with that being said, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to this channel, click the notification bell, share this video with all your family and friends who want to get started in real estate as well. And listen, I'm going to see y'all on the next one. Peace.